Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen, at the Cusp for Freedom, where we discuss our perspectives on why and how we became who we are as digital nomads, so you can gain a better perspective on the different things that you can do to become one, um, and the different routes that we take. Mind you that everybody comes from a different background, so everything you hear on this podcast, do take it with a grain of salt, and yeah, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, today, I have a very special friend of mine, um, I'll let him introduce himself so he can tell you his name, where he's from, and what he does, and how long he's been a digital nomad for. Uh, hi, my name is Kush. I am from India, and I live in New Zealand. I've been traveling around for a year now. Uh, I'm a tax accountant by profession. I got lucky with my uh, job because of COVID, and everything went uh, digital, so... I think I'm the only accountant who's on the road. <laughs> right, right. Um, and yeah, I mean, the only tough part is uh, working New Zealand hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I'm enjoying it. And I've been to India first and then spent six months in Mexico. I went to US for a bit, uh, New York. And now I'm here in Colombia. Word, word. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Wow, yeah. that's, a, that's a large background. Let's dive deep a little bit. Yeah. Um, when you were a kid growing up, did you want to become a tax accountant or what did you dream of becoming? Well, I used to play cricket but back then. Play cricket? The, cricket, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I thought I would become a professional cricketer at okay. some point. Okay, I'm guessing but, you're pretty good, better than me at this point, yeah? Uh, yeah, a little bit. But there's uh, heaps of people out there which are better. Okay. 1.1 billion population. Okay. Only 11 people play, so okay, for the country. Okay. But yeah, wow. the odds were against me, but <laughs> I like, yeah, yeah, enjoyed my time, uh, played a quite of uh, cricket, trying to figure out what to do and things like that. But accounting was natural. My family is full of accountants, my father being the accounting professor at the university. Yeah. And yeah, I was like, oh, this is a safe route. And that's how I started doing it. Wow, so you would say your parents had a huge influence on who you became today. Yes. Um, when you were going in high school and college, did you already know what you wanted to become early? And did you, did you think that it facilitated your route to becoming that successfully, knowing what you uh, wanted to become early? I wouldn't say so, because definitely I had like different plans. At some point, I would wanted to become a chef mm. or things like that. Wow, but, you're very skilled. <laughs> but yeah, I think Destiny had other plans, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So, and then accounting just happened to me. Got a job uh, in New Zealand, got lucky, and yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it now. Wow. That's how it is, yeah. Uh, did, you go, did you go to college? Um, I don't know how it works in New Zealand, but in the U.S. you get a lot of student debt. Yeah. Um, did you have to go to any of that? Did you consider that as a risk? And is that something that you would say, um, for example, if some, for somebody to take your route, yeah. do they need to go to college? Um, do they need to go to a certain type of accredited college? And what are like the challenges to getting into those type of colleges or something like that? Yes, coming from India, it was very difficult to move to New Zealand. Uh, I went to New Zealand for like better life and uh, better opportunities and things like that. Uh, yes, I had to do my master's. My student debt was about 100,000 New Zealand dollars, mm. which was quite a bit. And with the Indian currency not so strong, it was like, it was tough, but made it work. Uh, did my two years of masters and once graduated then started looking for jobs uh, mm, so you, and, yeah you didn't intern while you were in college you no it, it works differently in new zealand you intern after you graduate interesting yeah and but you go for college you do your, like a two-year master's two years masters yeah okay that's tough that's tough was there any was your was your two-year masters difficult in any way for someone that want to take your path or like what strengths do you think you need to apply in your like your final year? Is it like you know be disciplined or be good at math? I don't know. Like how how <laughs> difficult was it? People people sometimes uh, think that accountants are good with numbers. Okay. Actually, they are not. Okay. Uh, many are not because there's too many numbers. Okay. Uh, in <laughs> fact, we as accountants are good with knowing the the rules, mm. the rules around the taxes and things like that. So, Similar to like a lawyer or? Yes, kind of, yes. Oh, wow. So, so you help like find loopholes so that people can save money in their, in their, in their accounting books. That's correct. Interesting. That's correct. So that's how we work. And 
I mean, special uh, for my specialization, it basically works like that. Okay. Finding a loophole, knowing the laws, every year the laws keep on changing, so keeping on top of that. Uh, so yeah, it is kind of, I would say, you, you have to have your basics right. So basics are basically from your high school days, your undergrad days, and things like that. Yeah, but you have strong basics. Have okay. strong basics, and then I would recommend you can become like a good accountant, but it's still there are ways to do it. We are humans, we can be trained. And I believe once you know the software and things like that, once you keep on top of the rules, okay, uh, I think anyone can do better in accounting. Account. Yeah. Okay. So keeping the software, knowing the software, and keeping um, update, being updated with all the different rules and ways to have loopholes in your accounting books yeah. and stuff like that, is very um, key to being a good accountant. Yeah. Um, would you Would you ever like? Do you see yourself like being an accountant for the next five years, or do you see yourself like starting a firm because you know? so much that, like the ins and outs of accounting so much that you yeah. can start your own firm and have your own clients um sort of ways like um and what are those loopholes that you're that you're talking about like what are some strategic ways that you know i don't know uh, <laughs> the loopholes will be very difficult to like discuss right now because there, there can be many right okay okay okay, uh, okay. but i would say I, I had an opportunity like last year to open up my own firm uh, partner with one of my friends uh, back in New Zealand, but then it was like in a smaller town, and being a single guy, I didn't really want to live in a smaller town okay. and stuff like that. When the opportunities would be great, I would have done good for myself. But I was like, I still want to venture out, see the world. Mm. And Why can't you start your firm while you're traveling, like as you are now? Uh, it is difficult because when you are starting your own firm, you have to face the clients one to one. That's true, and but that can be like a business um, expense on like meeting clients, right? Yes, there can be, there can be, but then traditionally accountants, they, they have to meet uh, face to face. Okay. And not everything can be done over a Zoom meeting or, or by video calls. Mm. So initially you want, you want uh, people to come in, see you as a person, yeah. and if you can be a good accountant uh, for them. For them, okay. So that's like a, a personal service which one has to offer. Uh, so I believe that wasn't possible. And COVID in New Zealand was a little bit tough. Uh, and then I decided to just stay with this firm. Uh, luckily, because the way the things were happening, everything became digitalized. Uh, uh, there's no much paperwork involved these days. And my team was growing. Interesting, and your team was yeah. growing during COVID. Yes, it was, like there's a lot of work. I mean, Interesting. Is, that, is it like everything just became digitalized? Yes. Is that why your team is growing so they can adapt to the that's digitalization of, tax, of taxation? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, I mean, the industry is basically moved on. So New Zealand is basically uh, export industry, and also tourism is a big part. But then the tourism died down. But there's like other industries coming up, and they need accountants to uh, uh, get their books sorted. And they're doing it from your company. Or from yes, your from okay. my company. Yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, I was working for the company for a while. I had some privileges, I would say, uh, in terms of flexibility and the freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, things uh, changed. Uh, uh, personally, there was like things going around in my life which I had to like overcome. So I decided to like leave New Zealand and try out this digital nomad thing. Uh, yeah, initially, I was skeptical yeah. that if I would have to work, the New Zealand hours were different. And I have to like put in 40 hours and things yeah. like that. Uh, but eventually, after three months, I started getting the, the hang of it. And uh, the work was flowing in easy. I didn't really have to uh, work New Zealand hours. Mm. And uh, yeah, my clients were happy because everything was only on emails. Okay. And once in a while, I have like phone calls and stuff. But also, yeah. I have my team to back me up in New Zealand. Cloud if someone wants to meet uh, uh, my senior accountants, my senior managers, and they can do the face-to-face -face meeting, but I can still look after the books and things yeah. like that. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, it's amazing that you have that flexibility and you're trying it out to um, to broaden your perspective um, of the world we live in. True. Um, do you? Wh how did you? How did you hear about digital nomads? Or is it like during COVID there was like a trend and like you kind of followed that trend? Uh, when I started my job, I was, I met a few people. In New Zealand, basically, I meet like a lot of travelers, right? Yeah. Uh, and I heard about this where people are like working remotely as a freelancer and things like that. 
So I had a kind of a dream of mm -hmm. having a, like a nice job where you still get paid, but you also like work to travel yeah. and work and things like that. So that was just like four years ago. I just like put it out there in the universe. Interesting. And last year it just happened. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, it. I knew it would have uh, challenges of its own. Yeah, for and sure. If it was like freelancing thing, I would have been better. But with a full-time job, with a 40-hour thing, <laughs> it is, yeah, it can be tough. It yeah. can be, it can be. Yeah. Do you, um, do you, let's talk about those challenges. Um, what are, how, how have you been able to manage work and traveling? And wh what are some challenges that, that you've gone or faced um, as a digital nomad? And how have those challenges helped you grow um, throughout the process? Uh, for me, uh, I need a decent internet speed. Okay. To work at, <laughs> yes, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's one of the biggest challenges, right? Uh, finding a good place with a decent internet speed and things like that. So I was confined to like uh, like big towns or like cities Clown. and mm -hmm. things like that. Confined, ooh, yeah. I like that word. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm listening. It was difficult to move around from place to place, but I still managed to like have like a weekend trips uh, going to other places. Uh, finding uh, a good place to stay and with good people around mm. that was difficult <laughs> uh, being uh, three years in COVID I did not have a community in a way in New Zealand so I was definitely looking for like a, a place where I have a, a good community yeah. uh, with uh, everyone with similar interest or kind of similar interest but in the same boat <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, that was that was one of the big things so it was hit and miss. Sometimes some places it was good. Sometimes it was not. So I think that's one of the challenge when you are uh, on the road. Uh, definitely working hours. Mm. So uh, the Central America or Latin America is kind of all right. But when I was in India and a few other countries over there, it was very difficult because I had to like wake up at like 2 a.m. Wow, that's and sometimes, crazy. Yeah. 2 a.m. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's. <laughs> I'm not going to bed at 2 3 <laughs> <laughs> But it was like you party, you don't go to sleep, and then no, you start no, working, really. clear your emails, I'm and weird, then probably like go to sleep around like 4 till up to like 8, and then at yeah, wow, the end of the day, you again like start working, clearing your emails and stuff like that. Wow. But yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a challenge, and me having an Indian passport, mm -hmm. it's also difficult to like select the countries mm -hmm. because not every country is so welcoming with uh, no visas and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I have to pick my own countries and see if they allow me with visa-free entry or on arrival or things like that. That means that's a little bit, it's a little bit tougher for you to be a nomad. It's a, yes, that's a challenge, it is. right? It is, it is, it is a big challenge like that. Mm. Wow, it takes a different type of person to be a digital nomad yet again to like, not be from America, but to be from a country that less like even harder yeah. to be a digital nomad. Yes. So like, congrats to you, bro, I mean, that's, <laughs> That's very tough. Um, wow, 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 wow. How about traveling? Did your parents instill traveling in you when you were younger? or? Uh, yes, they, my father pushed me for traveling. Mm. I mean, fun fact. That's a I key just had a, I just had a phone conversation with my mom yeah. two hours ago. She yeah. was pissed <laughs> because I've been like traveling a lot. Okay. And she's like, oh, when are you going to settle down and things like that? Yeah. But yeah, my father, he put the seed of traveling in me. <laughs> when I was like 20, 2021. Yeah. So yeah. I wow, went to what Europe. did your father do? He's an accounting professor. Does he travel? Do you travel as a nomad as well? No, he does not. Hopefully he does. I mean, he's retired now. Yeah. But yeah, he, yeah, he enjoys a good life. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's tough. I think, I think like traveling, especially when you're young, yeah, um, it makes you curious. It makes you um, open-minded. I don't know, just for sure, for sure. And I think that helps you cultivate um, certain traits that yep. that might that lead us that's necessary for success in this world. Right? Definitely. Um, so, how yes. has traveling shaped your perspective? How is it? Um, yeah. How is it shaped? Um, I would say yeah, things have opened up for good, at least for me. Yeah. Yeah, coming from a country where. There's a lot of culture involved, a lot of uh, social stigmatism, wow. and things like that. So yeah, I'm kind of breaking barriers here. Oh yeah, let's <laughs> go, let's go. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I know that there are many other Indians who are living in the U.S. and Canada and stuff like that. Yeah. They also like traveling, but for me, it was, I, it just, I couldn't fit in. It couldn't fit in the society in India. So I had to like, uh, uh, move around, live, try to find some other country to live in. Mm. It wasn't easy, right? When you're yeah. like traveling and when you're like in your early 20s or like even like when you're growing up in like late 30s, it's difficult to make friends and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so that, that those are the, the challenges which were there, but I knew that I didn't want to be in my comfort zone. Yeah. Always like going through meeting loads of people, learning about different cultures and Facts. things like that. Facts. So yeah, and if you're getting a, a paid job along with it, why not? Like you know. Oh yeah. So yeah, it was it was great in that sense. Yeah. Do you think, um, I mean, why do you think most, most of us don't travel? If only 2% of the world travel and less than like, you know, a quarter of that are nomads, like only 35,000 nomads in the yeah. world, right? Um, what do you think the effect of, you know, 2% of the world being nomads, for example? Um, and, you know, I think, I think like to break barriers, like you said, and become a digital nomad is one thing. But I think doing it in today's like you know uh, matrix yeah. is is another. Um, what are some things that? What are some advice that you would give to a kid that comes from your type of background um, that they can take with them and maybe resonate to break barriers? Um, you know when they're pursuing their their journey to be like you yeah. or, or better. I, I would say yes, money is important, careers are important, so. Being a digital nomad, it's it's tough in a way where you can't pursue like big careers mm. initially. So you have to start very slow, uh, have a decent job which we can like pay around your bills and save some money at least like when you are traveling. So, but the the place where I come from, where we are so career oriented, we are so money minded that yes. As soon as we get out of the college, you should be having a good job, a good degree, things like that. It's difficult. I would say to the new people that you take a step back, don't go for the big careers initially. Become a freelancer, like become a writer or like mm. a travel blogger. Wow, that's or, a good idea. That's a good place, uh, things like that, where yes, you will get decent amount of pay, but it won't help you uh, buy expensive, luxurious things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think at in, in those early years, experience matters. And yeah. when you're traveling, you have the good, bad, and all kind of experiences on the road. Right. So yeah, you you, you start slow, you you dream big, and uh, don't don't go after careers. I think yeah. Wow. On start the road. slow, dream big, and <laughs> don't go after careers. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. so tough. <laughs> Start a business, guys. But start slow and dream big. That's basically what he's saying. Like, yeah, you're yeah. the business. Yeah, the business. Yeah. But then, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is tough. And, wow. And uh, <laughs> people, people don't realize that. But then, once you're on the road, the the opportunities you get, like even for me, meeting other digital nomads, other travelers, facts, 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 and facts, things facts. like that. Yeah, you just the you blow it out of your mind, like yeah. you, the stories they go through and uh, yeah. things that happen to them. And you told me a personal story like five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. So sure. I mean, I wish it doesn't happen to anyone else. Hey, but yeah, it happen, you. <laughs> you learn, right? Yeah, you move on. Yeah, yeah you like. move on. So, uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's that's one of the challenges, and people should face it. Like, don't live in your comfort zone. Facts. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. What um. Okay, now that, now that we've discussed why and how yeah. you became who you are as a tax accountant um, and how you became a digital nomad, let's, let's talk a little bit about your life philosophy. What, um, do you have anything you live by on a day-to-day? -day? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yes, <laughs> in, in, in a way, I just had a, a good discussion with my friend, best friend yesterday uh, about the life philosophy and things. Uh, my thing was, I'll be like 35, which I'm right now, owning a house in New Zealand, having my own practice, like having a comfortable life yeah. and things like that. But I was like, 
not every time things work out. Yeah. It's only probably one person of the population, uh, what they dream of, they become. The rest are basically, yeah, slaves to their needs. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. But I think if you uh, just keep enjoying what you're doing, yeah, um, I'm sure you'll get by. But then, for me personally, I had big dreams doing this, having this career and things like that. Didn't work out, so I started living day to day. It's seize the moment, right? Mm. And then not think about future much. Yeah. And Keep I don't know where moment. I'm. Yeah, I'm, I don't know where I'm going next. I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Nobody, yes. nobody's got it figured out though. Not even yes. those that um, that do, you know, you know, yeah. Like yeah. Nobody's really ever got really, it. Really, yeah. Out. But then I mean, yeah, but people do have like short-term goals. Like I, yeah. I would have like a short-term goals, realistic goals. Yeah. Not like extraordinarily big, but in a way, I was like, yeah, just live day to day. Like the other day, we bumped into each other. You told me about this opportunity. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah, I right. love that. That's, so, that's tough. That's tough. That's really tough. So since I left New Zealand last year, I was like, this will be my yes trip where I believe in things. <laughs> I'm like yeah. saying yes to like everything. <laughs> Uh, I've done some crazy shit as well, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I've experienced it all. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, it is. Um, you said meeting people. Have you met any interesting people in your travels? What are some, what's like the most interesting person you've met? Hmm. There have been plenty. There have been plenty. But I think I met this, a, a guy in Mexico. I believe he is one of the most interesting. I don't. I mean, he wasn't technically a digital nomad, but I really want to put it out there that he was like living in the small town. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID really scared him. Okay. He he purchased this piece of land, saying this will be an uh, uh, escape route for him, and he will like stay there uh, alone. The COVID won't touch him. Okay. And he had all these like conspiracy theories and things like that. Interesting. So yeah, he was he was <laughs> kind of interesting, interesting guy. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting, interesting. That's one of the interesting guys I've met. But I've also met like people who have done really well uh, with digital nomad thing. People have been like starting companies. So they do it. They have inspired me like for a long run. Like if I want to do this in a long term. Uh, definitely, it will be difficult for me to do in accounting, but I'm sure in some other aspects of life, uh, I can partner up with someone, uh, be like a good friend, and we can start like a, a travel blogging company or like a merchandise company or Accounting whatever, right? Where we can like do it online. So yeah. those are the interesting people I've met, and I mean, many of them have inspired me. So Parking. yeah, yeah I'm was... still keep in touch with them. Just, yeah. yeah, just to like know their thoughts, know their process. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. how you learn. I think you can yeah. learn more from conversations than you can from books. True. Um, and um, I mean, from my perspective, I think that's kind of one of the biggest reasons um, I, do, I do these podcasts to help more people travel so they can have these conversations um, and learn as much as they can. So, um, yeah, we can have better experiences. I don't know. But um, yeah, do you have any last words for our audience that are watching today? Um, anything that they can take with them and apply in their daily lives to be like you or better? Um, I would say just do it. If your job allows to do it, try to like do a couple of months here and there. Try to meet different people and have this experience. I believe this will be once in a lifetime experience. Uh, and especially if you're coming from cultures or countries where this is not a normal norm. Uh, yeah, I, I think it will be like a big step out where you'll have some amazing life experiences, some moments, and uh, there's like so many interesting people out there who will inspire you. Some people will disgust you, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's, that's life. You, you put everything in one glass and then, yeah, you just drink it up. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Man, you're so sharp, bro. <laughs> um, but it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast, Kush. Yeah, my pleasure. And, um, and thank you guys for tuning in for about 30, 40 minutes. Um, hope to catch you on the next episode. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, right. bro. Cheers, brother.